welcome back and our weekly QPR preview shows recommence after what was, of course, an eventful World Cup, uh, World Cup break for QPR, with Michael Beale leaving for his beloved Glasgow Rangers. As we record, it looks like we're heading into this weekend's clash with Burnley without a new manager in charge. Looks like it's going to be Paul Hall, assisted by Andy MP and Paul Furlong, who are taking charge of the R's. It's been four weeks since our last match, which was, of course, a pretty insipid display at Coventry, making it just one point and one goal scored in the last five games for QPR. When you think how terrible those stats sound uh, and how poor we were on the pitch against Coventry, it just shows it's the manner of Beale's departure that stings. It's not the fact that he's actually gone. Because it's not the worst time for him to go in terms of where we were on the pitch, is it, Dave? Yeah, no, it wasn't going well before he before he left. I mean, that Coventry game, I was quite optimistic we'd see a reaction at Coventry when we played him. It feels like months ago now, but when we played him. But um, we were awful on the day and just didn't do anything. And Bill just seemed to stand there with his arms folded, did nothing second half to change it. Coventry, just, we didn't make any subs until after um, Coventry got their second. It was a really odd, odd day. So as we, as we were leaving, I was, I was at the game as we was leaving. A few people were saying something must have gone on behind the scenes. And I was, I was thinking, no, no, just a bad day at the office. But obviously something was going on, as, as we know now. Yeah, it would have been intriguing to see if he'd have maybe changed formation for this match now or going over the next few matches or whether he would have changed some personnel around. We're never going to know the answers to that. But as we'll probably come on to, it'll be interesting to see whether Paul Hall sticks with that same kind of lineup and shape and style or whether they're going to try something different off the cuff. Looking quickly at the leading candidates for the job, the Bucky's favourite remains Neil Critchley, followed by Spanish manager Marty Kipuentes, I think it is, currently managing in Sweden. Then there's Anthony Barry, coach at Chelsea. Do you think it's going to end up being one of those three in the leading on the odds? It does sound like it. Although I thought if Critchley was going to get it, he would have probably got it by now. He's out of work and seemed the obvious one. But maybe they were just taking their time to do interviews this week. I mean, who knows? Um, I was kind of thinking they'd try and do a quick appointment with all these games coming up. But it seems to be they're not, you know, in a massive rush. Um, those three sound right. I mean, the guy, is he from is he at Chelsea? Barnes, or is it, Man, is it the one at Man City? Uh, there's, it's Mur Barry Murphy or something like that, isn't it? Or whatever he's called at Man City. And then there's Anthony Barry, is the one at Chelsea. Yeah, Barry's one at Chelsea, yeah. I mean, he seems similar in, like to Mick Bill, so I wouldn't surprise me if they go for him. But um, it's, it's similar to what they did in the summer. There's loads of names out there, but they're keeping everything quite tight-lipped. There's no, there's no obvious favourite, I don't think. And Chris Wilder was uh, up in the betting the other day, and I, I just can't imagine that one happening. No. So, yeah, yeah, he, he's, here, it? he's fourth on the list of the current favourites, but it doesn't seem to match where the club's heading and the way we make signings and all that kind of stuff, does it? I mean, it's good that they're doing the due diligence again, but we've got the Christmas matches coming up, three matches in a row. Then if we wait around, the new manager is going to have it hard to try and instill his new ideas, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it seemed an ideal time to do it during the, the window, but it's... It, this little break they've had, but it's happened quite late in the break, hasn't it? It's only last week. So the time to get someone in, we've got a game already Saturday. And like you say, the game's come thick and fast over Christmas. It's going to be difficult for any new man coming in to change anything massively. Um, yeah, yes, it's a difficult one. Uh, you know, maybe they're doing the right thing and just making sure they get the right one. Um, it's a big decision to make. They, you know, they can't really afford to get it wrong, you know. We're looking good at the minute. We're about, well, I think we're back in the playoffs, and we were out playing, so that was a good result at the weekend. But, you know, we've seen in this division, you can easily drop down quite quickly with a couple of bad results. And we've got, as I'm sure we're going to come on to, we've got a tricky looking fixture list the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I mean, literally, it couldn't be a harder match now for us to come back with, could it? Um, the league leaders, Burnley, I mean, they're a side we've not faced much actually in our history between the two clubs um, compared to other teams in the league. Typical QPR, though, we've still contrived to lose twice as many matches as we've won. We've not met them for six and a half years. QPR only won one of the last 13 matches spread over 15 years. This season, specifically, Burnley only lost twice in 21 games. They scored 40 goals. And it's worth pointing out that there's only one other team that actually made it into the 30s. So they carry a massive threat going forward. They last failed to score on the 12th of August. All things considered, it looks bleak, Dave. Yeah, they're a good, 
probably not the team you'd want to face in our form, is it really, at the minute? Um, you know, I, I thought they were starting to go a bit stale in the last couple of years in, when in the Premier League. And I thought when they come down, they might struggle a little bit. But obviously they've got the new manager in and he's completely revolutionised the place. They play a different style of football. They're very attacking, um, far less direct than they used to be, but they've still got like Premier League players are, are around it. They, you know, they've done really well. They've been really impressive. Although I did see them against the Sheffield United the other week and um, they couldn't defend a corner to save their lives, which probably won't be a problem against us, but they did, that did look like a weakness for them. They struggled big time against Sheffield United with, with set pieces. Yeah, they've been on TV quite a lot. Any standout players that have caught your eye from their side? I mean, that Cullen in midfield looks a good player. Uh, I think they're going from Anderlecht. Um, the the Moroccan, I've forgotten his name, the wide player who obviously won't be playing at the weekend because they got through. He's been excellent for them. And they've still got Bar Ashley Barnes, who he's one of them strikers. He's probably too good for this league, to be honest. Um, I, still, I still saw him against... Blackburn as well the other week, and they absolutely destroyed them, didn't they? Um, yeah, it's, like I said, it's not the easiest of games to come back to, is it? No, no, but you're right, your company, he's gone in there, hasn't he, and completely changed how they play. I mean, I think if they score two goals, it's been a bad day in front of goal for them, because they've got, if you look at the recent results, it's like threes and twos and fours. Um, they obviously like to get the ball wide and get the wingers into the game, and I think that could be a problem for us if they push our full-backs back and negate our threat, because that's been something that teams have been doing anyway. I suppose that brings us on to QPR. Out of form, no manager. Where do we even start, really? Um, you mentioned it before. We've actually gone up into the top six again, despite not kicking the game, uh, kicking a ball. The fact that we've stayed six, despite the run that we've mentioned that we've been on, is what we've mentioned a few times on these shows in the past. The standard of the league, I know some people say it's competitive, but to me, I think it's a really poor standard this season. And the top six is still there for the taking, isn't it? It is, and I think the, the break obviously come at a good time for us. You know, we we were in a in a bad place when we had that break, and it should be a fresh start for everyone. Obviously, form wise, we're not in great form, but it's it feels like the start of the season again. I'm not too sure the form book really matters that much. I think if we were playing a Burnley side that were playing every week and in tip top form, I I wouldn't fancy it at all. But it's a bit of an unknown this one, and one. Like one thing about it is, I wonder how the players are going to react over Bill. Some of the reactions on social media seem to suggest they're not overly upset that he's gone, and I, I wonder if there's going to be like a real like let's prove him wrong type thing on on Sunday. It's a, it's a big game for him. Um, yeah. Obviously, we're going to be missing chair, but I mean the rest of the side should you know should be pretty strong. Yeah, you make a really good point. I'm hoping that they can like channel an anger. I don't think I don't know if anger is the right word, but like just keen to prove Beal wrong and show like why did you leave us behind? Look what we could have done, kind of thing. I hope they go that way rather than the oh well, why should we bother now? Then if the manager's going to leave, uh, probably be more QPR to go the latter of those two, and hopefully not. You mentioned there, obviously, Ilias Chair is still away with Morocco. Jeng will be back. Obviously, he's only probably going to arrive back later in the week but do you think he'll arrive home and come straight back into the side or could we possibly see Archer I, I would have thought he can come straight back in I mean he'll have been training in the last couple of weeks I know he hasn't played but um, he, I, I would have thought he'd come straight back in um, I think even if uh, Morocco had gone out I think Cher would have probably had to sit this one out because they finished a bit late their last game was a bit later and um it's probably easier for Dieng to come back in as the keeper. Um, I'd be surprised if he doesn't play. I would have thought he'd come back in. Yeah, hopefully he's keen to come back and prove how good he is because it must be frustrating when they go and don't even get a minute on the pitch, isn't it? Yeah, uh, probably seeing how their keeper played the other night, he probably should have got a game. I know, I know. He was ropey in the first game, wasn't he? I thought he might drop him, but he never did. Um, I hate to bring it back up, but one goal in five games is terrible. What can we do to sort that out? Because, in truth, we haven't really looked like scoring in some of those games either, especially Coventry. I mean, we had like a 30-yard effort from Rob Dickey and that was about all we mustered in the whole game. Could it actually do us a favour to maybe play without Chair? Because he's usually like one of the first names on the team sheet and see how we go without him. Because we did well last January without him, didn't we? Yeah, potentially. Yeah. I mean, goals, you just need Willock to turn up. If, if Willock's on form, you know, we've got a chance against anyone in this division if Willock's playing well. But, um... Yeah, I mean, maybe it's worth looking at the team without playing the two number 10s. Um, you know, 
I think teams are starting to suss us out. If you can stop them too and stop the pullbacks, we're going to struggle. So, so maybe, maybe do something different. Maybe play with two up front. Go with um, Armstrong and Dykes up front that we can will it behind. Um, or, or maybe bring in Richards to uh, come into midfield, play a little bit deeper. It's probably worth changing up. I don't think it's the end of the world that Chair's not back yet. Um, you know, but for me, Willock's the, the key one. If Willock plays well, we've got a chance of, of beating anyone. Um, hopefully he's back fit because he didn't play against Livingston the other day, did he? So, no, no, no. Although, to be fair, we, we wanted him back for our recent results and he, we didn't really improve much, did we? But he didn't look right, did he? Hopefully he's uh, himself managed to get over his fitness issues because he looked like he didn't want to run, as we said in one of the last preview shows. It was like he was scared to move and hopefully that's behind him. With Paul Hall being in charge, because obviously he's in charge of the B team, do you expect him to give any of those players a chance because he's worked with them frequently? We're probably talking about the likes of Thomas, Bond, Shadipo. They're the players he kind of manages more than the others and... Will he think, you mentioned playing two up front, maybe Bon especially, could he maybe think we'll throw two up front? Potentially. It's very hard to tell with the team. I know when, a couple of years ago, when Ramsey first came in and in a similar sort of role, he brought Darnell Furlong in out of nowhere, didn't he? Yeah. Do you wonder if there might be one of the younger players makes a surprise uh, start in the team? But, um, I mean, for me, I, I, I think we've got enough senior players that we should... This team shouldn't be hugely different to what it was before. Um, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's quite unknown, isn't it? Because, you know, a, a new new manager again, who knows what they're going to do. Yeah, I mean, if he gets the, a win here, Paul Hall, he's going to go straight to the uh, front of the line with the bookies, isn't he? Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised. The only other question mark over the QPR team, I suppose, is over Stefan Johansson. He did an interview and it sounded like he could make it. Would you think they're going to give him another week to recover with so many matches to follow? Yeah, potentially. You, you want to get him as, as fit as possible, don't you? I, I don't think it'll help playing, rushing him in for one game and then he misses four or five. He's such a key player for us. I, I wouldn't have thought he'd start. Maybe have him on the bench at the weekend, ease him back in. But, um, uh, yeah, he's, he's such a big player for us. We do miss him when he's not there. I mean, he was he was a big part of why we were doing so well earlier in the season. You know, Willock was getting all the headlines, but Johansson was fantastic in midfield. We really missed him. I don't think it's a coincidence that we've fallen apart since he's been, been missing. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. I think Willock, like you said at the start of the season, it was all, we need Willock to do something, but Johansson has proved that it's kind of him as well, isn't it? Without him, then we didn't really even pick up the results recently. Final prediction then for this one. Obviously, it's live on Sky as well, which sometimes doesn't bode well for QPR. Yeah, I'd like to be positive, but... I, I can't see anything other than a Burnley win, I'm afraid. I, you know, they're, they're a good side. I think they're an exciting team. I think we'll give them a game. I don't think it'll be an easy win for them. I, th I think it'll be a close game, but I just think they've got too many goals in them. And like we've said, we haven't got enough goals in us. So, unfortunately, I'm going to go with a Burnley win. Yeah, me too. I mean, a, a draw would actually be a fantastic result in this one, wouldn't it? Because we've, it stops the rot in terms of our recent three their defeats in a row. It'd be a good result against the league leaders. My concern is if Burnley score early because it's one of those odd kickoff times. And I think if they scored early in the game, and obviously everyone's probably a bit deflated about the manager walking out as well, and to concede early on an early Sunday kickoff, I think it'll be a very flat atmosphere and long afternoon if they do that, couldn't it? Well, it's going to be. Uh, we've got the England games on Saturday night, so there's probably be a few people hung over Sunday morning, and how that result goes will probably affect people's mood as well. So, like, like I say, if it's an early Burnley goal, it could be a long afternoon. Yeah, I think anyone who's got money, put it on England and QPR to both lose, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, well, anyway, thank you as always for watching and joining us. Like, comment, subscribe if you can. We'll be back next week to preview the longer way trip to Preston. And until then, come on, you ours. You know who we are. You know who we are. We are QPR.